Thanks, students. So in earlier class, we were discussing about interstate parity theory, and so far we have discussed scenario one and scenario two. So as uh, scenario one, interstate parity theory. To explain interstate parity theory and how to prove interstate parity, the parity between interstate differential and spread percentage. So when there is a uh, parity between spread percentage and interstate differential, then there is no meaning in or arbitration. Is not suggested or possible. So when there is a parity between interest rate differential and spread percentage, interest rate parity theory, according to the interest rate parity theory, and we have illustrated why arbitration is not possible or not suggestible because. No gain, no loss. Even if you invest, even if you borrow, arbitrage means borrowing in in one market and depositing in another market for another interest rate, right? Or buying in one market and selling the same thing in another market for higher rate. Buying, buying certain commodity or a certain currency for lower rate in one market and selling the same thing in another market for higher rate. So. Arbitration is not possible or not suggestible because there is no profit, no loss. If in case interest rate differential is with parity with interest rate differential, spread percentage and interest rate differential are equal. And in last class we have discussed that interest rate differential is greater than spread percentage. So, in last illustration or in last class, we have we illustrated that we have proved that, that if when interest rate differential is greater than spread percentage, then you have to borrow at lower interest rate and deposit in that country or that bank where interest rate. Deposit at higher interest rate to gain from to gain from arbitration process or arbitration. So these two were the earlier illustration, and we have proven. And today, vice versa, if spread percentage is greater than interest rate differential, we need to illustrate today. So you can see here, so spot rate between US dollar 1 is equal to rupees 60 and likely forward rate after 1 year for US dollar is rupees 69 and Interest rate in India is 7%, whereas interest rate in US is 5%. So now So, interest rate differential in the given problem is 7 minus 7 percent minus 5 percent, that is 2 percent, and spread percentage is equal to forward rate minus forward rate divided by forward rate into 100. That is equal to forward rate is 69, one year likely forward rate, and forward rate is will be 60 divided by forward rate. Spot rate multiplied by 100.
So spread percentage is you need to calculate nine divided by so spread percentage is fifteen. It's much greater than interest rate differential. So in the given problem, we have calculated that. Spread percentage is greater than interest rate differential. Spread percentage is 15% and interest rate differential is only 2%. So we assume sum of rupees 1 lakh in India. What happens if we borrow at higher rate and deposit in lower rate? That is in US. So Borrow rupees one lakh in Indian bank convert at spot rate that is rupees one lakh divided by spot rate is rupees sixty. One six six point six seven thousand six hundred sixty six point six seven US dollars. So why we convert to deposit in US bank? You have to have dollar with you. They never accept Indian denominated currency, rupee denominated currency. So you have converted into dollar at the spot rate that is rupee rupee sixty per dollar. Now you are going to deposit you are depositing one thousand sixty six point sixty seven dollar in US bank and in US interest is interest in US is five percent interest at the rate of five percent that amounts to Eighty three dollars, eighty three point three three dollars. So, mature sum after one year, one seven five zero US dollar. One seven five zero, right? One seven five zero is the mature amount. Now, after one year, you have to expand the one thousand. You have to expand the age. Expatriation means bringing back the money, the deposit that money. So reconvert dollar one seven five zero at forward rate after one year. The likely forward rate is rupees sixty nine. Is one lakh twenty thousand seven fifty rupees one lakh twenty thousand seven fifty. So this this is what you have earned uh, by investing by borrowing one lakh in India and converting it into dollar and depositing the uh, one thousand six hundred sixty six dollars in US bank and you got the interest of eighty three point three three. The five percent interest was offered by US bank. So mature sum you. Uh, earned uh, from your deposit is thousand seven fifty dollars. So you you are reconverting thousand seven fifty dollar to Indian rupee. It has become rupees one lakh twenty thousand seven fifty rupees. Now you have borrowed
repayable loan is one lakh rupees you have borrowed and Indian bank charges every interest of interest at the rate of seven percent. That is seven thousand. So matured amount you earn by investing in US dollar or depositing in US dollar is rupees one lakh twenty thousand seven fifty. With this amount you are Loan repayable is rupees one lakh seven thousand. So, by with the help of arbitration process or arbitrage, gain from arbitration is thirteen thousand seven fifty. So. Rupees thirteen thousand seven fifty you earned from arbitration process. That means you borrowed loan at higher rate and you have deposited in lower rate, deposited in that country where the interest rate is comparatively lower than India. So you have earned rupees thirteen thousand seven fifty by borrowing one lakh. By borrowing one lakh, you have earned. 13,750 is quite significant amount at almost 13% return on your investment or deposit. Now, if a US person borrows at lower rate, by, by seeing this, US person thinks that the interest rate in US is 5% and the same interest rate offered by a bank for deposit in India is 7%. So by borrowing at 5% and depositing at 7%, clearly I gain from arbitration process. So what happens if so? So to invest around 1 lakh in India, what is the dollar amount a US person has to borrow? Rupees 1 lakh divided by rupees 60 is dollar 166.67. So, to invest around, to invest worth 1 lakh in India, US person has to borrow in dollar. So, while converting dollar into rupee, it, it becomes 1 lakh. So, he has to borrow 1000. 1,666.67 dollars. So convert and deposit deposited amount in India is 1 lakh. After converting 1,666.67 dollars uh, export rate it becomes rupees 1 lakh. So he has deposited rupees 1 lakh in Indian bank and India the interest rate offered is 7% so that is 7000 so he earns 1 lakh 7000 in India This 
This is the matured amount. Matured amount is rupees one lakh seven thousand. After one year, by depositing one lakh. See, so far the uh, transaction is he borrowed one lakh worth US dollar. That is one thousand six hundred sixty-six US dollar in. Uh, some bank in US. He converts to deposit in India. He has to convert it into Indian rupees. So he converted that uh, spot rate that is rupees one lakh. So deposited the same one lakh and he got the interest of seven percent per annum. That is seven thousand. So matured amount he gets back rupees one lakh seven thousand. Now to convert to US dollar because he has to repay his loan amount in US dollars. So he has to convert it into dollars. So convert or reconvert at forward rate that is rupees one lakh seven thousand divided by rupees sixty nine that is the forward rate. One thousand five. One one five five zero dollars. So US dollar one five five zero. So with the help of this, You have borrowed dollar one sixty six point six seven. So US bank charges interest at the rate of interest at the rate of five percent. That that's what one seven five zero repayable amount repayable amount after one year is one thousand seven fifty dollars. So. Arbitration gain or loss actual amount of the amount earned by arbitration process is one thousand five fifty dollars. With this, you have to pay loan repayable dollar one seven one seven five zero, right? So. Loss from arbitration is two hundred dollar. You have lost two hundred dollar by borrowing. See, simply we can say that borrow at lower rate and invest at higher rate to gain from arbitration. But the interest rate parity theory says if spread percentage is greater than interest rate differential. You should not borrow at lower rate and invest for deposit or deposit for higher rate. You will lose. You will lose your money. So that's why interest rate parity theory, the scenario number three, explains if
if interest rate differential is lower than spread percentage or spread percentage is greater than interest rate differential then borrow at higher rate and because in that country where interest rate is lower to gain from arbitration process so we have proved all three scenarios the interest rate parity theory talks about the parity between spread percentage and interest rate differential when there is a parity interest rate parity theory says no arbitration arbitration is not possible because no gain no loss when there is interest rate differential is greater than spread percentage in that case borrow at lower rate and deposit at higher rate to gain from arbitration process that that also we have illustrated if interest rate differential is smaller or spread percentage is greater than interest rate differential then borrow at higher rate of interest borrow in that country where interest rate is comparatively higher than other country and invest or deposit in that country where interest rate is comparatively lower that's what that's what we have done we have borrowed uh, borrowed from india at this 7% and we deposited in in, in us for 5% we have earned 30750 rupees by borrowing 1 lakh that's almost 13% of return on your deposit so these are the three scenarios interest rate parity theory talks about while explaining in your sem exam you have to illustrate all these three scenarios to explain interest rate parity that is irp theory next class onwards we will solve problems on interest rate parity theory along with purchase power parity theory we have to combine these two theories while solving the problem